The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Canola School series. I'm Kara Oosterhouse. In this episode, I talked to Angela Bracken-Reed, who's an agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. Angela and I talk about some of the crop conditions she's been seeing across the province in the last couple of weeks, as well as what producers need to know when it comes to some of the recent frost damage and now wind damage that has occurred in their canola crops. I've seen a lot of different things. It's been an interesting spring. We had a slow start to the spring. Uh, it was unseasonably cool. Uh, kind of felt like it was never, ever going to start. Um, canola seeding delayed later than normal for Manitoba but still seemed relative to other years still seemed early because of the conditions. Um, so with with the cool weather we had slow emergence and then um, came the flea beetles then came some frost. Uh, we had patchy emergence canola stranded in in dry soil. We still have quite a bit of regions that are really hurting for some moisture. So lately there have been some areas of Manitoba that have seen some wind blasting. Can you speak to that? Yeah, so uh, we had a really big wind event here uh, an, a few days ago, fairly recently, uh, where the wind itself was shearing leaves and damaging leaves and also moving soil and, and causing that shearing because of the, the soil moving. So after that wind, when producers are going out to look in their crops, with frost, you have to wait that couple of days. Is that the same with wind? Um, winds may be a little bit different because if, it, if the canola plants get, get sheared right at the ground, you've lost a growing point, you, you know you've lost a plant. With, with frost, it's, it's a little harder to tell immediately. You know, the next day it could look really healthy and three, four days later it's dead or vice versa. Um, with, with wind, yeah, like I said, if it's sheared it right off, you know, it's kind of the nice thing, you know, it's, it's gone. Um, or it's just beat up the leaves a bit and, and uh, you've still got the growing point there. It's going to recover from, from that damage. What does the growing point look like for anyone that might not know entirely when they should be receding or whether they should be doing it at all? Sure. So the growing point of canola is right in between those cotyledons. That's where new growth is coming from. So as we've seen with frost or hail or, or these type of events, you can completely lose the cotyledons or lose leaves and still see green material come uh, from that growing point. So it's really what we're looking for. And that's what makes it a little tough is you need to wait to see growth. Um, so sometimes we suggest you to know, take some flags, mark some plants, go in daily over, over that week and, and see if you're, you're seeing some growth coming. So at what percentage of damage would you typically see in the field before you should be considering to reseed? Uh, so, so with regards to stand loss, uh, and if we're talking, so anything, so frost or, or flea beetles, we, um, n now this maybe is a little bit of a moving target depending on what point in the season is it and what are soil conditions like um, but we know that this is a really plastic plant and that we can get pretty reasonable or, or even reach yield potential with four plants a square foot or less now there's some other management factors that come into play when you have low plant populations and ideally we're seeing that somewhat uniform across a field so if you're down to two plants um, Yes, you, there's, there's a, a chance you can reach your yield potential, um, but if it's really non-uniform across the field, it can be a challenge to manage that. And I, I think, you know, there's many other things that come into play besides just yield when you're considering what to do with a stand like that. And as I said, calendar date really plays into that. So uh, June 14th today, I would look at that very differently than I would on May 15th. Okay, and anything else you think we should point out when it comes to wind damage or stand establishment? Yeah, so I've received many pictures after, after the wind damage and it's, it's concerning and it, it doesn't look pretty. Largely, um, the, from what I've seen, these plants will recover from that damage. We just have to keep in mind that we now have a stressed plant, a plant that's probably more vulnerable to feeding only because it has less material 
for flea beetles to feed on. So with flea beetles, there's a, an action threshold of 25% defoliation. If you have less material, you can reach that level much faster. And we've seen fairly aggressive feeding this spring. So I would just, and I think most people, most producers are aware they got to be watching this because it's been, it's been a real, a real headache, but particularly uh, want to pay attention to those crops.